With K3S, it's easier than ever to run Kubernetes anywhere. When it works, you hardly even know it's there. But when it doesn't, you'll wish you had taken the extra steps to make it fault tolerant. High availability configurations used to be hard to set up and fragile to operate. But now it's almost harder not to build an HA Kubernetes cluster. Do you want to know how to deploy HA K3S in just a few minutes? This video is going to show you how to do it. My very first YouTube video back in 2019 was called How to Use RKE to Make Rancher HA. I shot it in the old studio, which is right over there, and it's been one of the most popular videos on the channel. A lot has changed since then, with me, Rancher, with RKE, and it's time to share a dirty little secret that I've wanted to tell you for a long time. You don't need RKE anymore. RKE has a little brother you've probably heard of. His name is K3S, and he's a little dynamo. He packs all of Kubernetes into a pint-sized binary that runs almost anywhere. He's lean, he's mean, he runs on any machine. Literally. ARM and x86 processors, Edge and Data Center, IoT devices, Raspberry Pi, or other single board computers. Anywhere. It's so easy to run K3S that if you only have one device, Rancher developers now prefer that you run a single node K3S cluster instead of deploying Rancher as a Docker container. And since Rancher 2.5 was intentionally built to run in both single and multi-cluster environments, you can run a single node cluster for both Rancher and your actual workloads. This makes a great way to get started learning Kubernetes or for running systems and environments where a single node is enough, but when you start using a tool like Rancher for managing Kubernetes, you're going to want to consider high availability. You might be asking, do I always need an HA cluster? The answer is no, you don't always need the cluster to be HA. If you have a node that's running a workload that performs a standard function, and if that workload is configured through Kubernetes resources like config maps and secrets, then as long as you can tolerate downtime, it'll probably be faster to just build a new one if it fails. With higher availability comes higher complexity, higher costs, and more work. So just don't go there unless you have to. Think of a wind farm. If each turbine is controlled by a K3S node, the cost of a single turbine being offline for a few hours is less than the cost of having redundant K3S nodes for every turbine. Now think of a nuclear power plant. If any part of that is controlled by a K3S node, there's more than one node in each cluster and more than one cluster controlling each component. The backups have backups because the cost is totally worth it. As I said in my original RKE video, and as I say in the Rancher Academy, Rancher uses the HA functionality of Kubernetes to become HA. So to make Rancher HA, you just need an HA Kubernetes cluster, and that's what we're building today. High availability in Kubernetes happens in two places. First, you need an HA data store. If you're working with etcd, that means an odd number of nodes greater than one. People usually start with three, but as the cluster grows, you'll need to add more. etcd needs quorum, which is a fancy way of saying a majority vote. So the minimum number of nodes you need online is one more than half. That means a three node cluster can lose a maximum of one node. A five node cluster can lose a maximum of two. It's important that you have an odd number of nodes so that you have the minimum number of machines that can fail for the optimal number of machines in the cluster. Both a three node cluster and a four node cluster can lose one node and still maintain quorum. But a four node cluster has a statistically higher probability of failure just because there's more nodes. The second place that high availability happens is in the control plane. This component doesn't need quorum, so you'll need a minimum of two control plane nodes. It's okay to combine those when you start out. You could have three nodes dedicated to etcd and the control plane. As the cluster grows, you may want to split the etcd nodes off into dedicated nodes that are optimized for etcd traffic. But we're not there yet. K3S has two options for HA. One is to use an external data store. That can be a relational database, either Postgres, MySQL, or MariaDB, or an external etcd cluster. This moves the HA requirement for the data plane out to an external source, but that source has to also be HA. The other option is to use the embedded etcd, which means you'll need a minimum of three master nodes in the cluster to act as the control plane. 
best practices say that these should not also run workloads. So your cluster size is a minimum of three nodes before you start running agents to host the workloads. An HA control plane is used by Kube Control and by the Kubernetes agents to communicate with the API server. They can communicate with any node in the control plane, but if that node goes down, the cluster goes down. So what's the point of having an HA cluster if you can only talk to one node? It's like having two roads to a destination, but only showing one of them on the map. The simplest way to make sure that client traffic finds one of the master nodes all the time is to use a load balancer. And this doesn't have to be anything fancy, just something that can route traffic from one IP to multiple IPs, and then do health checking of the backends to make sure that a failed backend doesn't receive traffic. You can do this with HAProxy, Nginx, or any cloud load balancer solution. Oh, and your load balancer also needs to be HA. The other way to do this is to use a solution like KeepAliveD or KubeVip to put an IP address on a node and then move it to another node if the first one fails. Unfortunately, these solutions don't work in cloud environments where you can't put multiple IPs on a host or where you can't advertise addresses via ARP or BGP. If you're in a cloud environment, you're going to have to use a cloud load balancer. So what does all of this look like from top to bottom? You've got an HA load balancer. Then you've got an HA control plane. Then you've got an HA data store. And off to the side here, you've got agents hosting the actual workloads. It isn't hard, but it is complex. Maybe a single node cluster is fine after all. I mean, just run some backups on it and call it a day, right? That's another video. Let's get rid of the HA load balancer and use kubevip. That gets rid of two nodes and a lot of complexity. I already have a video that shows how to connect K3S to an external database. So for this video, let's use the embedded etcd. To do that, we'll need three nodes for the data and control plane, and then we'll just use a single agent for the workloads. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. This is the command to bring up the first server node. Let's look at all the options that we're using. The host is named demo A. I'm SSHing in as root. I'm going to install K3S 1.19 because Rancher doesn't support 1.20 yet. I want ketchup to save the config as config.demo.yaml and to name the cluster demo inside of it. I do this so that my clusters have all unique names and unique config files. I prefer that over using one large kube config file. The dash dash cluster flag says to bring up the cluster with the embedded etcd server. The TLS SAN argument says that the certificates should also accept this IP as a requested destination. That's the IP that we'll use for our VIP. Finally, I'm telling K3S not to start the service LD and to taint this node to prevent normal workloads from running on it. For the next part, I'll SSH directly to the server node. K3S will install manifests directly from a local directory. It's a lot of directories, but that's what we're gonna do for kubevip. The first part of the installation is to add the RBAC configuration, but after saving it, we need to edit it. Don't worry, any changes that we make will be automatically applied. We need to add permission to control the leases resource in the coordination.kates.io API group. If we don't do this, kubevip won't announce any addresses and the pod will just throw errors into the log. The LAN interface of my host is ENS18, and to make things easier, I'll set that and the VIP as environment variables. We'll use these in a second. KubeVIP will generate its manifest from options provided to the container. So their docs recommend first pulling the container down and then creating an alias for that command. Once we've done that, we can move on to creating the manifest. We'll be running KubeVIP as a daemon set on the control plane nodes. We'll announce via layer two using the interface and address from earlier. We want it to load balance the Kubernetes control plane and to use Kubernetes leader election to decide which pod makes the announcement. Because of our control plane taint, we need the manifest to tolerate the taint and we want it to use the service account that we created with the RBAC manifest that we just applied. We'll pipe this to T and then we'll save it in the manifest directory. 
If we check the daemon set, we'll see that it still has zero pods assigned, which is weird because we have three nodes, right? Well, it turns out that just like the RBAC manifest, we need to make a change. The generated manifest doesn't apply an operator to the toleration, nor does it have a value. Because the default operator is equal, this toleration doesn't match. So we want to change it to exists, and then the pods will be scheduled onto our server nodes. Once we're able to ping our VIP, we can then update our kubeconfig file to use that VIP instead of communicating directly with the first server. After that, we just have to bring up two more servers and an agent, pointing them all to the VIP instead of directly at demo A. Before I do that, notice that the job that will install traffic is pending. This job runs on a worker node, even though traffic will run on control plane nodes. So that job needs a home before it will run. Now let's real quick bring up the rest of the nodes. So now you can see that the job ran and the traffic pod is running. The load balancer service, though, is still pending. We'll get to that in a second. Failover of the VIP is fast. If we shut down K3S on demo A, within a few seconds, the IP moves and we can continue to work with Kubernetes. It'll still take Kubernetes a few minutes to decide that the node isn't coming back, but during that time, we're still able to work with it. It's pretty cool. KubeVIP is supposed to be able to do load balancing of the Kubernetes API as well as its services, but I couldn't get it to work. I could get it to assign addresses, but it wouldn't actually announce them. So I opened up a couple of issues around it and about the behavior that I was seeing, and I'm hoping that the developer will get it sorted in a future release. If you've tried to use KubeVIP and run into this, you know it's really frustrating. Fortunately, we can run both KubeVIP and Metal LB in the same cluster. And if you know anything about me at all, it's that I absolutely love Metal LB. Metal LB installs via manifests. So we'll continue to use the manifest directory on demo A. The instructions have one manifest to deploy the namespace and another to deploy the workloads. I'm just gonna combine those into a single manifest and then move it into the auto install directory. Metal LB speaker pods keep a constant communication between them encrypted by a secret that we have to add. This communication enables other speakers to detect failed nodes quickly and start announcing their IPs. So we'll create that secret from some random string. And then the last part of the installation is a config map that tells Metal LB what addresses to announce. I'm just gonna give it a block of 10 addresses. And once we assign that, we see that the traffic service gets an IP. So we could have hit it if we were a little bit faster, but within a few seconds, it stops responding. Why is that? Well, first, let's test that Metal LB is actually working. I'll spin up a deployment of the Rancher demo workload, scale it up to three replicas, drop a service in front of it, and then test it. That worked, but the traffic IP doesn't. I'll save you the trouble of digging in the logs. It doesn't work because traffic is running on a control plane node and the Metal LB speaker is running on a worker node. I don't know why it won't announce it or why it worked and then stopped working, but it is what it is. It turns out, if we check the manifest, it also has a toleration and it also doesn't have an operator. Running into two of these back to back makes me wonder if I just don't understand how taints and tolerations work but the docs are pretty clear. The default value for an operator is equal, and a toleration will only match a taint if the keys are the same and the effects are the same, and if the operator is equal. Now, I think no value is not the same as any value, so with no value, it doesn't match. If I'm wrong about this, let me know in the comments. I spent a lot of time with it today before making the video. So we'll set that in the manifest, save it, and in a few seconds, speakers appear on the other nodes. Now, if we hit the traffic address, we'll get the default 404 backend. Awesome. This is a solid K3S cluster, and all it needs now is Rancher. Now, Rancher depends on Cert Manager, and both of those are installed via Helm. 
It's easy to use Helm on the command line. You know, Helm install, blah, 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 and you're good. But that's a one-off solution. Later, you might wonder what the command was or what options you used. So instead of doing it that way, let's use Rancher's Helm controller and the manifest directory that we've already been using. They're going to take a few minutes to come up, so let me first put them into the manifests directory and then we'll walk through them. Helm chart CRDs go into Kube's system, but the target namespace parameter tells it what namespace to actually install the chart into. For the cert manager resource, that's the cert manager namespace, and we're creating that at the top of the manifest. Cert Manager only needs install CRDs true, but for Rancher, we'll provide a host name and pin the image to a tag. I like doing this to make sure that Rancher doesn't accidentally upgrade itself if the pod restarts. Since stable is just a pointer to a moving target, passing the actual image tag is much safer. The Helm chart CRD can take individual key value pairs under the set key or a multi-line string for values content. I like using values content because K3S doesn't have to parse individual key value pairs to build the chart. Once these are installed, they appear exactly as if they had been installed with Helm on the command line. Remember, Rancher is HA because Kubernetes is HA. As long as you have a fault tolerant Kubernetes cluster, your Rancher installation is safe. But HA is only one piece of the puzzle. You also need backups and a GitOps strategy for your workloads. But those are topics for another video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Join me over on twitch.tv slash adrian.goins for live streams where Shipwreck and I show off cool technology and answer all of your questions. You can also join the Discord server and the free community site. Links to those are in the video description, and they'll also be in the end screen in a few moments. Take care, everyone. Keep learning and stay caffeinated. I'll see you in the next video.